Welcome viewers. Um, welcome to Champlain College's live stream this evening. My name is Nadia Mitchell and I'm one of our associate directors of admissions here at Champlain College. And this is our very first live stream of our spring semester. Our topic tonight is on student leadership, and you have a, we have a great panel lined up for you. Um, just want to let you know that all of our live streams can be found on our admitted student pages um, of our Champlain College website um, to both watch live now and also they'll be available after we air. And all of our live streams are also going to be archived, so you'll have access to those through our blog at champlainadmissions.champlain.edu. Throughout tonight's event, you're going to be able to ask questions, so don't hesitate to drop your questions in our chat feature, and I'll make sure that we do our best to get those questions answered for you while we're on, on the air. And at this point, I'm happy to turn our live stream over to one of our student leaders, um, the host of our event, Steph, and our panelists who will introduce themselves. And at the end of the live stream, I'll be back and um, to conclude and wrap up our hour. So welcome, Steph. Hi everyone, thanks for joining in tonight. My name is Steph, I'm a senior psychology major with a minor in business administration. Um, and I'll be hosting today's panel on student leadership. Um, so before we get started, I do want our panelists to introduce our, uh, themselves. Um, so we'll start with Kiana, if you can just say um, what your name is, where um, your year, your major, and what leadership positions you currently hold. Hi, my name is Kiana. I'm a third year secondary ed major with a focus in English. And the leadership positions that I hold are that I am a club head and I'm also a cabinet member of the SGA. Awesome, um, and we'll go over to you, Brian. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm a senior management creative media major. Uh, with a specialization in film and broadcast. And my student leadership positions are I'm a lead student ambassador as well as a financial peer coach. Anthony? Um, my name is Anthony. I am a senior psychology major. Um, and some leadership positions that, I've, that I currently hold on campus. I'm one of the tour trainers for the student ambassador team. Um, and I've been a resident assistant orientation leader in the past. But right now, that's, that's what I do on campus. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Um, so we're going to get started on this live stream. If you're watching right now, you can keep sending in your questions um, through the chat over on the left side of the panel. Um, and hopefully throughout the live stream, we'll be able to answer all of your questions tonight. Um, so Anthony, I'm going to start with you. Could you just tell us why you wanted to be a student leader um, and how did you come about some of the opportunities that you found? So my experience with getting into student leadership was more of, it was really, I felt like it was really time for me to step out and start, you know, start working and starting to get that leadership experience. So for me, it all started with Ame um, in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. I went to her and I was like, Ame, she was at the time the Chief Diversity Officer. Um, and I said, Ame, I really, like, I need a job, but I don't know where to look. And she said, I think you'd be a great student ambassador. So that's kind of how I ended up in my first leadership position. I was I was really looking for that responsibility. I was ready to start, you know, earning some earning some of my own money and starting to meet people on my own around campus. Um, so that was that was my like into student leadership on campus. Was there were there other parts to that question? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, you're good. Okay. Um, Brian. Uh, oh, sorry. And. Um, could you just tell me a little bit about what your role is like as a student ambassador, as well as um, as what it was like for you as an orientation leader and a resident assistant? Yeah. Um, so my role as a my role as a student ambassador on the uh, as or more specifically a tour trainer on the student ambassador team is to basically ensure that everybody's giving accurate information on tours. So editing scripts. Um, training newcomers to make sure that the tours that they're giving are, are, are the best that they can be, but also just to make sure that they're comfortable with all the stuff. Um, and then just student ambassadors in general, you know, we interact, we're basically the face of admissions. Um, so we, we're the students that you interact with if you ever come to visit campus. We're usually wearing those really nice blue jackets, so just come say hi to us. Um, and and uh, my role as an orientation leader and a resident assistant, um, as an orientation leader, I was really tasked with 
and making sure the students felt welcome to campus, um, making sure that everybody was adjusting properly. So every OL was assigned to their own hall. Um, so I had Jensen and I love those kids. They were great. Um, and then as an RA, you're really just, you're, you're the voice of reason in the hall. <laughs> you're, you're making sure everybody's, everybody's coexisting peacefully, um, but you're also there as a mentor um, to like be there to support um, the students who live in your hall to make sure that, you know, everything's going well with them. And there's a lot of programming and, and stuff like that that goes into being a resident assistant as well. So a lot of responsibility over my four years. Um, oh, totally. No, I, as a former resident assistant, I, I also know. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, Brian, so what about you? Why did you want to become a student leader? And how did you come about some of the opportunities that you found? Yeah, uh, so I wanted to become a student leader just because when I came to Champlain, um, I saw those positions as like a really great way to kind of challenge myself and more importantly to get outside of my comfort zone because uh, that was something that I really wanted to do. Uh, and I knew people who were peer coaches at the time and I saw what they were doing. They were doing cool stuff like giving presentations about credit uh, and investments and uh, counseling people. And I thought like I could never do that. And it was that doubt that was like, I definitely want to make sure I can do that. And then I am at a point where I'm doing that. So for me, it was a great way of kind of embracing a fear and also just like throwing myself outside my comfort zone. And that was a huge reason why I wanted to be a student leader. Awesome. Cool. Um, and could you tell us a little bit about what you did as and or currently do as a peer coach and also what you do as a lead student ambassador? Yeah, so as a peer coach, I work specifically on the financial track. Uh, so I give presentations to students about credit cards, investments. Um, I just launched a workshop about student loans. So helping students understand what different loans are there, repayment plans, just kind of getting that in the back of their mind that student loans is a thing that they should think about. Um, and I also do one-on-one -on -one consultations with students where we pull their credit reports, we do a soft pull, we go over, go over their credit scores with them and kind of what makes up their credit report. Uh, and then as a lead student ambassador, uh, like Ant said, we're kind of the face of Champlain. So we're who you meet when you go on tour and at all the admitted events, um, but specifically as a lead, I kind of manage the student team. I'm kind of the go between between the students and our supervisors in admissions. Uh, and I kind of help run the team, make sure everything's going smoothly with my co. Uh, we do a lot with inventory, office inventory, making sure everything is where it needs to be and making sure that all the projects that we need to get complete, get completed on time. Dope. Um, and could either one of you um, just talk about what it's like just generally being a student ambassador? Sure. So um, being a student ambassador, the main thing is we do a lot of tours, so it's kind of we come into the office and we see what tours need to be done. And we love, that's a huge part of our job that we really love is we love meeting students, especially students when they're excited about Champlain. Uh, they wanna see our campus. We love it when we go on a tour and students are asking questions, they're curious, and they wanna know uh, what's going on on our campus because we love relaying that information because we love being Champlain students and we love showing off our campus because it's why we're in these jobs. Um, so those are just kind of like the big part of what we do. And then we also, we get to interact with students and we make phone calls and we write letters. Uh, we have all forms of communications with students are interested in Champlain because uh, we want to talk about Champlain because that's why we're here. If you've even looked at the Champlain logo, we've probably called your phone at least once. <laughs> True. All right, Kiana, um, could you also share with us why you wanted to become a student leader and how you found some of the opportunities that you've um, you've had to be a student leader on campus? So <clears throat> I wanted to become a student leader because I wanted to help inspire people. So, for example, I am a club head for the club Shades of Me and as a club head, I'm able to help the members of my club do things that they may not have thought of doing before. I help to support them. I help give them new ideas. And then we also do things that kind of bind us together as a group. Um, and then I wanted to join the SGA because 
I wanted to make a difference and make a change within the school. And I thought that would be a really great avenue to do that with. So being a cabinet member in the SGA, I'm able to take on much larger projects than I may not have been able to do if I wasn't. I'm able to speak to the president during meetings. I'm able to write proposals that I know where they're going and who they're going to. I get to speak with Dr. Angela Batista on a regular basis. It's allowed me to branch out and do more than I ever thought I'd be able to do. And I was able to come upon these um, opportunities because someone who believed in me told me that I could do it. So the old club head of Shades of Me came up to me and said, I think that you would be an amazing club head for this. I think you would do a great job. I didn't believe her at first, but after taking it on, I started to see the qualities in myself that she saw in me. And it was the same thing for SGA. I got shoulder tapped and urged to apply because people saw these qualities in me that I never saw in myself before. That's awesome. Um, and just for folks who don't know what SGA is, could you just say, uh, just tell people what SGA is um, and what they do and what specifically is your role? So the SGA is the Student Government Association, and basically um, there's multiple different roles within it, but we help to maintain clubs in the school. We budget money to put on events to fund clubs. We um, speak to the president of the school on like a couple times throughout the semester to tell him the projects that we've done and to also help give him feedback on what we hear other students are doing. My role is the director of diversity and engagement. And what I do with that role is I speak to faculty and staff on issues that some students may be having in their classroom surrounding diversity and inclusion. And I help to create workshops for faculty and staff to use later on. Um, that would guide them for either pronoun usage or name pronunciation. And we also support students in whatever endeavors that they want to do. So if they want to put on a banquet, we help students be able to find the money to do that, to get them to talk to the right people and just lead them in the right directions. Cool. Um, and can you just talk a little bit about your responsibilities as a club head? So my responsibilities as a club head is that I keep in touch regularly with our advisor. Um, I help to put on events that represent our club. I budget our money. I hey, um, also make sure that the other club heads, so the vice president and the treasurer, that we're all on the same page about what activities we want to do, and also to make sure that the rest of the members of the club are feeling included and that their voices are being heard. Dope, awesome. Um, so we are gonna talk about next, um, what, was, what were you most excited about for your first leadership position and what were your expectations? Um, and Brian, we're gonna start with you. Um. What I was most excited about was just the team dynamic and the people I was going to get to work with because I saw um, as a first year the type of team morale that kind of came with some of the student leadership positions that I was in um, that I wanted to be involved with and that I eventually got involved with. So um, just the ability to meet new people um, and be in a team dynamic I was really excited about. Um, and like I said, I was really excited before, like just the opportunities to challenge myself and um, try new things and really push my comfort zone really excited me. Um, and expectation wise, um, I expected it to be a lot of fun and to grow as a student and as a person. Uh, and having been in these positions for three years, I definitely have seen that growth in myself. So that was an ex expectation that came a reality, um, which I've been really excited about because I know that I've seen that growth um, and I've been able to do things like launch a new workshop. I haven't just facilitated stuff. I've done that the past few years, but I've actually gotten to 
do the research, get it going, and actually launch it. So there's been a lot of really cool realities that have come from being. Cool. Um, and what about you, Kiana? Um, so something that I was looking most forward to, like during my first leadership position, was as a club head, I was really excited to meet new people. Um, just because there are the regular members of the club, but each year new people come to events and meetings. So I was looking forward to being able to talk to new people, meet new people, get new ideas and perspectives. And then something I didn't expect was, I never expected how hard it would be because I had misconceptions on being a club leader. But even though the work was hard and I put in a lot of effort for events and keeping up with the paperwork side of it and keeping in touch with a lot of different people, in the end, like after you hold a big event, you see everybody's faces and how excited they were and like it just made it worthwhile. That's really awesome. Um, and what about you, Anthony? So I was really excited about meeting new people when I came into the when I came into the essay position as well, but uh, to to not run the risk of sounding redundant, um, I remember when I got the call that I got the job of being an essay. I was in the middle; it was winter break, and I was in the middle of eating a sandwich. And our boss Jovan called, and I, I answered in the middle of my bite. I was like, "Hello," and it was it was I was just I remember getting the news and how immediately just ecstatic I was. And it was more so just because my first leadership position on campus was also my first time having an actual job. Um, so it was it was a big coming of, almost like a coming of age thing for me. Um, you know, the feeling of making my own money, handling, you know, handling a lot of personal responsibility really meant a lot to me. Um, and, and something I didn't expect, something that caught me off guard um, I would say it would probably just be like, I didn't know how seamlessly everything kind of flowed into each other. Like, I didn't know how easy it was for me once I had my foot in the door to hop to other leadership positions I was interested in. So that caught me off guard, but kind of in a good way. I was pleasantly surprised to learn that, you know, now that I had that experience and now that I know these people, I can apply to different jobs and people already know, you know, what I bring to the table. So it was, you know, in that, in that kind of way. That's really cool. Um, so, Kiana, um, curious for you, what was the coolest thing that you've ever experienced as a student leader? Kiana? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to turn the lights back on, but it's not working. Um, the coolest thing that I experienced being a student leader would be when I was able to go to Boston um, because I am in the SGA. We went to a conference um, and I was able to talk to other people who were in different um, SGAs around the around the country, mostly like on the East Coast. And it was really cool listening to like how other schools run and how they operate and just being in a city that I've never been before. That's really cool. And did, do you, you still keep in contact with some of the people that you met um, through this? Um, I don't, but some of the people who were there as heads of workshops. Um, there's a couple of conferences that I have reached out to um, because the leaders and the speakers there were really influential that I've reached out to them to try to actually bring them to this campus. That's really awesome. Um, what about you, Anthony? Um, a similar experience to, to Kiana's, I would say, um, going back to my first year, um, me and me and some other uh, men of color at Champlain 
founded Quest, which was a, which is um, our, the first men of color affinity group at Champlain. And at the time, it was it was really monumental and it really meant a lot to us. But a part of founding Quest was we went to the uh, the University of Akron for um, this huge conference called the called the Black Male Summit, and it was basically just a a, a gathering of you know black men who've been successful speaking about you know different different issues regarding social justice or just you know how to be successful um, a bunch of people networking and sharing sharing ideas and sharing tips of like what to do in interviews or jobs or you know to to how do i create a program for mentorship for youth like there was just so many different uh topics and so many sessions to go into to you know so many people's brains to pray to, to pick excuse me that it was just i don't know it was it was unlike an environment that i've ever been in before and it it really kind of ignited that fire within me to to be like you know this is what you're shooting for like you want to be one of these people um so it put things in perspective for me what about you brian um, I would say one of the coolest things for me, and this has happened had a, a lot this year compared to other years, I think it's just being a senior and being in this a student ambassador for a few years, is I've had a lot of people come up to me who are current students now, whether they're first years or second years, being like, you gave me my tour, like I remember you, like you talked about this, and that's been a really cool experience because it happens a lot this year, and that's something that I have had before, but not as often happened this year and that's always a really rewarding feeling knowing that something that I said really connected with them as that they really love the school as much as I do because that's always what I hope when I give on tour is that I'm able to communicate why it is that I love Champlain and can help them find what is best about Champlain for them and what they love too so it's always really nice when I hear that I'm successful in my goal. That's really awesome. And I remember when I was a student ambassador, it was always the best when someone comes up to you and said, you give you you gave me my tour and you're the reason why I came to Champlain. So I definitely really feel that. Um, so we have a question um, from one of our viewers. Um, this question is from Chris um, and they ask, as student leaders, um, what are uh, what are two of the most common challenges that you see students face integrating into Champlain? Um, so Brian, I'll go back to you. Um, we'll go Brian, Anthony, and Kiana. If you could just say a few words of what you think that um, that they, uh, students tend to find really hard about integrating. Um, one challenge I think back to, I used to work a lot with first years in particular. Um, and one thing I noticed with them is that there was sometimes a reluctance to want to reach out and kind of join clubs and meet people and get involved within campus. And that's really a huge important part of being on campus is reaching out and wanting to be involved and get involved because they do, there are tons of opportunities here for you, whether it's um, clubs or whether it's student leadership roles. Um, so kind of the emphasis, the emphasis of getting people involved and giving that motivation is something that I think sometimes students struggle with because a lot of times people are, co are coming away from home, they're leaving home to come to Champlain. So kind of getting over um, homesickness um, to get involved is somewhat of a challenge, but what's great about Champlain is that there are tons of resources um, for those students to help get, to get them involved. Um, and that's something that I've really noticed and I've always loved kind of working with first year students in particular to kind of showing them just how important it is to get involved and make sure that you're taking advantage of all those resources that are available to them. Um, I think one of the biggest things that people run into, you know, and, and I think this is true for any college, not just Champlain, um, but I think it's especially true at Champlain. Like we have a very specific culture of acceptance of, you know, we want people to be able to be themselves here. And I think when people come in, that's something that that takes them back a little bit because they they think like I they might not know what that looks like yet you know maybe they haven't had chance to really explore and and think about what it is you know the type of person that they want to be so now they're at Champlain and everybody's like do you you know and we'll just you know we'll be cool with it and they're like trying to figure out what that means um, but I think that's like an integral part of every college experience and I think that you really just need to be true to yourself 
um, students come in and they think they have to like act a certain way in order to make friends. And the fact is like, you're going to integrate into the community just fine as long as you are yourself. And if you're in the right place, it'll show. Um, and I just, I, that's just what I've observed in my time here. I think, you know, people just need to just, just be themselves and things will work out. Um, I think the most common challenge that I've seen is that new students are afraid to reach out and ask for help when they need it. Um, like students first years are afraid to ask their professors, talk to their advisors, um, just reach out if they need anything. And so I think that it's important to know that like everybody at this school is here to help you. Like if you're having trouble in a class, speak to your advisor, you could speak to a professor, even if it's just talking to somebody else who you meet in your class, talk to a friend. Because even if you feel like you're struggling, like you're not struggling alone, you have resources on this campus. Like there's a smart space that helps you with tutoring. You can talk to um, counselors if you feel like you're struggling with mental health. And even if you just need somebody to just express your own feelings to, like there's so many different staff and faculty who will just sit down and listen to you ramble on because they're here to help you and they everyone at the school really does care about the students. Totally, for sure. Hopefully that answers your question, Chris. Um, and if anyone else has more questions, keep dropping them for us. Um, we'll keep answering them throughout the live stream. Um, but we're going to move on to the next question now. Um, so I know you're all capable and I know you're all awesome. Um, but even as a student leader myself, I know that, you know, sometimes we just can't do it alone. So um, can y'all just talk about some of the mentors and role models that y'all have had along the way um, as student leaders? Uh, and Brian, I, I think I'll start with you again this time. Yeah, so when I think of like the, my mentors on Champlain campus, I really do think back to my supervisors in admissions, but also um, over as a peer coach, I've been really lucky to have really exceptional supervisors throughout my time here at Champlain, people who I could always go to um, if I was just having a bad day or if I needed like advice or just I wanted to pick someone's brain about how to approach a problem. That's been really, really helpful and something I've really admired because I've never felt that I couldn't go to them for help. Um, whether I was just really struggling with understanding how to read a credit report and really communicate that information effectively, I could always go over to my boss, uh, Jimena, and ask for advice. What's the best way to do this? How can I communicate what a tracker loan is to this student when I don't really know how to really get the words across? Stuff like that was really great. And just with my bosses and admissions, they're just two really exceptional people who I could always just really count on to help me get through difficult times. Those for sure probably the biggest mentors I've had and Champlain. What about you, Anthony? Um, I would definitely echo um, Brian on our bosses, specifically Veronica, because I had a very, um, I, had a, I had a unique experience coming in to Champlain and that I visited Champlain my senior year and uh, my admissions counselor was Veronica, who is now one of our bosses. And um, it, I, you know, we got in a conversation after the information session and the tour, and I managed to convince her to, in her travels, stop by my high school and give an informational session, which she did. Um, and a few people showed up to it, even though they weren't really interested in Champlain. But there were, it was good conversations, and I just feel like being able to reach out and that being reciprocated and her coming to my school when it was really like just for me really made me feel special and then when i came back and i was applying for this job and i'm like oh yeah veronica's in the interview i was like this is great um but also you know ame was a huge mentor to me when i came in um she she just like she knew the best she knew what was best in every situation like I swear that woman could do no wrong. Like I, I, I don't know. She was, she was like, she was like everybody's, everybody's grandmother. Um, so, so that was like 
probably one of my most influential mentors. And there have been, you know, seniors and juniors when I was a first year throughout the years who just given me the words of wisdom that they've accumulated throughout those times, which is one of the things that I appreciate about Champlain the most is that the upper class students aren't stuck up. They will befriend first year students um, and they'll let you know the ropes so that you don't have a hard time or, you know, maybe not as hard of a time as you would if you didn't know. So um, those would definitely be my mentors. Yeah, and it's really cool what you said about upper class students, too, because I think it's one of the things where, you know, a lot of the upper class students will help mentor younger students along. And then, you know, when it comes to being like us juniors and seniors, we kind of pass it along and, uh, and pay it forward to all the things that they've done for us. So I really like that point you made. Aunt. Um, and Kiana, we're not forgetting about you. What about you? Who are some of your mentors? Um, so to echo a little bit of what Anthony said, Ame was a really big mentor to me. She helped me when I needed it most. And also a lot of upper class students when I was a first year helped me during times where I felt low or I needed help with classes or anything along those lines. Um, as of right now, the mentors that I have are Bianca Bello, who is the new director for the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. And she's helped me so much these last few months with my classes and figuring out everything that I need to with juggling like junior year, finding internships, my job and things like that. And um, she's been really influential in making sure that I'm keeping myself healthy while also keeping up with my own schoolwork. For sure. So um, uh, speaking of keeping healthy, uh, it's really important as student leaders, we're so busy, we're doing things all the time. It looks like we're being pulled every which way. Um, so how do y'all manage your stress and what do you do on your free time in order to um, just make sure that you have some you time? Um, and Kiana, I guess we'll start with you. So what I like to do is when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I email my professors, I let them know what's going on, and I try to take like a personal day on days that I feel like I can. And on those days, like I don't do any work that I know is gonna overwhelm me even more. I catch up on TV shows, I maybe like read a book, like I just take my mind off of the, everything that's stressing me out. Um, and also I talk to a few people about it. I don't keep it bottled up inside. I make sure that if I am feeling super stressed out, I let other people know because maybe they have a solution that I didn't think of or they help me see things differently or they help me compartmentalize everything that I need to do. So I really have a week to do something and I'm not trying to pack it all into one day. Totally. Um, and any show that you're currently watching right now or trying to keep up with? Um, I'm been trying to keep up with Worst Cooks in America on the Food Network because yes. <laughs> that show is amazing. So, yes. Bless. I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anthony, we'll go to you. Um, what are some ways that you like to de-stress and, and take some time for you? I'm, I'm a big gamer. So, you know, I play a lot of video games. Uh, and it doesn't really work great if I'm stressed about work because I just won't do the work. But um, I've been playing a lot of Monster Hunter World lately, and that's just, you know, it's good to sometimes go into your own little, your own little virtual world and just do your thing. Um, but I also do have a dog. I live off campus, and uh, his name is Chip, and he does a lot by way of de-stressing me. He gives me a lot of cuddles, gives me a lot of licks. We'll go on walks, you know, if I need to get outside. Um, so he's definitely a huge source of, uh, of stress relief for me. Awesome. What about you, Brian? Uh, for me, I'm a big runner. I love going for runs when it's not too cold outside. That's a great way for me to just kind of de-stress and like get my thoughts in order. Um, I kind of need the fresh air. It's really helpful to me. Um, and also, I'm really passionate about film, so I'm always going to the cinema. 
Um, we have a great indie theater here in Burlington, so I'm always there. They pretty much know me by name at this point. It's pretty cool and sad, but um, I love that place. It's one of my favorite places in Burlington, a uh, really cool independent theater. So I'm there pretty frequently, just kind of immerse myself in film and what's kind of happening in the film world. And uh, any cool movies that you've watched recently or any favorite movies that you watched there? Uh, I saw Annihilation recently. That's a really cool if you're into some intellectual sci-fi. Natalie Portman, Gina Rodriguez, Tessa mm. Thompson, great cast. Highly recommend. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Brian. Um, so, you know, being a senior leader is fun and we find times for ourselves, but, you know, it, it does get hard sometimes. Like we're not, we're not going to front with anyone. Um, so can you all just talk about um, the hardest part of being a student leader has been for you and how you've um, been able to overcome it? Um, and uh, Anthony, we'll go to you. Um, so for me, the hardest part about being a student leader is, uh, it, especially at this point, having held so many of the student leadership positions on campus and wanting to do so many things, it's it was definitely like, you know, my first year, I, I, I plotted it all out, like, these are the positions that I want to hold. How do I plan this out so that I do this without you know, stretching myself super thin. Um, so that's that's the one thing that's really difficult is is just making sure you're not stretching yourself out, making sure that you have enough time dedicated to you know your leadership positions, but also to your classwork and also to yourself and also to you know your social life or any friends or partners that you have. Like you, there's there's so many things that go into it, and once you get into a leadership position, it's really it's it's so rewarding and it's so like it's so awesome that you want to keep just throwing yourself into it but you really need to be careful because if you do that too much then you wake up and you realize like i haven't slept in a long time i've been neglecting my homework and you know you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself and if you schedule the way that you know the positions that you take it can be a lot a lot better for your psyche and for your resume uh, and just quickly, like, how were you able to figure out um, how to kind of spread out those uh, student leadership positions? Yeah, so uh, my my first year, so I, I got the job as a student ambassador the second semester of my first year. Um, and then, so I, I knew I wanted to be a resident assistant. I knew I wanted to be an orientation leader. And I wasn't really sure about everything else. Um, so I applied to be an orientation leader for the... Um, my sophomore year for the fall of my sophomore year um, and I did that and that was fantastic and I knew I wanted to be an RA soon after being an orientation leader because I had such a great interaction with the first year students but I also knew that I wanted to study abroad um, and I wanted to be an RA for two semesters because I really wanted that connection with my residents like I wanted that to build over the year but I knew that I wouldn't be able to study abroad and also be an RA for two semesters when I didn't want to be an RA my senior year. I wanted to take my senior year as time to step back and really focus on my final projects. Um, so I just decided eventually to be an RA the second semester of my sophomore year. And I still had a fantastic experience. Um, you know, I see my residents, you know, even to this day, and they'll, you know, they'll run up to me and they'll tell me about how they're doing. And it was, it was just as rewarding as I expected to be. So I don't really feel like I missed out on a lot, but Basically, if you, you know, you look at, you know, what do you want to do at Champlain and just break it down by semester and, and, and just be real honest about it. Like if you want something bad enough, don't handicap yourself with it, find space for it, but also take care of yourself. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Brian? Um, I think one of the things that can be hard is that you, as a student leader, you're always kind of a student leader, no matter where you are, you're always representing that position. Um, you're always kind of representing Champlain. And sometimes if you're just having a really bad day, you have to not let that affect your job that you're doing. Um, you have to maintain that positive attitude. Um, so if I'm like giving a presentation as part of career collaborative and I may be having a bad day, um, I always have to remember to like be positive and to not let that affect what I'm doing because the students there are there to learn and get something out of it. Um, so for me, it's 
controlling that if something outside of my job is happening in my life to always have a positive attitude and make sure that I'm letting people get the best from me that they're that they need to get and that they're supposed to get um, that's really important and that just for me I learned that just from practice and from talking with my coworkers, um, talking to my supervisors I remember like that was really prominent as a second year when I was starting these positions hearing um, especially the seniors on my team kind of talking about ways that they managed that and just how important it was and I kind of learned from them and by example Dope. And Kiana? Um, so the hardest part for me was overbooking my calendar. I would get so many opportunities and I would want to help so many people that I would just have meeting after meeting after meeting, then class, then more meetings, then more class. And I wasn't leaving time for me to even eat. Um, I was going from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. every single day. And it was becoming super stressful and overwhelming. And so the one thing I guess that helped me overcome that was I just learned how to say no. And I always felt like I couldn't say no because if I'm a leader, I have to lead. I have to do everything that people ask of me. But if I say no, then they'll find somebody else who has more free time to be able to do it. Because if I'm overpacking my schedule, I'm not doing what's asked of me to the best of my ability because I'm burnt out. So I think that's one of the biggest things, biggest challenges that I've had to overcome was just saying no and leaving more time for myself. Totally. It's it's so easy to, to say yes. Um, but I think the one of the biggest things that I've learned is that sometimes you really do got to tell people no and that's okay. And there's nothing wrong with saying no to take care of yourself. Um, so we got a couple more questions from folks. Um, we have another question from Chris, um, and they ask, as student leaders, do you observe that social life for first year students center primarily around uh, residence hall communities, um, the extracurricular clubs, or the broader community of Burlington? They also said thank you for earlier. But um, Kiana, we'll stick with you. So, from my time as a student leader, I see that a lot of first years hang around more with their um, housing um, and also extracurricular clubs because you're, where you're living is your community. It's everyone who is around you on a day-to-day -day basis. It's people you see when you're going to brush your teeth. It's people you see when you're doing hall activities. Um, so you tend to make those connections, especially very early on in that first week. Everybody's moving in, all the doors are open, and you're trying to get to know basically everybody. And also with extracurricular activities, you there's always a club fair at the beginning of um the fall and spring semesters so a lot of first years tend to go to those and they find things that interest them or things that they never thought would be available like a student magazine or rock climbing club and they were able to try like these new activities so i see bonds and friendships being made from residence halls and mostly like club activities uh, what about you, Brian? I've observed, like, I think a combination of all those things. I think a lot of it does come from, especially with first years, where they live, because that is, like Keanu was saying, that is a big community. Um, I'm friends with a lot of students, a lot of people who I lived with my in my first year res hall. Um, but I've also, like Ant, uh, but I also have um, made friends with people I've worked with through my student leadership jobs. Um, there's a time where I had a job downtown and I met students from UVM as well, from outside the Champlain community. So I've I've had and known people who have kind of stayed within the Champlain community and made friends and had a social life that way, but also have met other people by doing other jobs outside of Champlain and a combination. So I think it really all depends on the student, um, but definitely like the first year res hall is like definitely a big place for first years kind of build that friendship and a sense of community. 
Awesome. Thank you. Um, so we have another question uh, from Noah and they ask, what opportunities are there for leadership in terms of student government and what student, what do students in these positions do to help their peers um, change things on campus? Um, so I'm going to throw this question to you, Anthony. Um, we answered that a, a little bit earlier when everyone was talking about their um, different leadership experiences, but if you can just talk about some of the opportunities that you've um, had in, in terms of student leadership and uh, what those positions have done to allow you to help make change. Yeah, um, I would I would love for Kiana to be able to talk a little bit about specifically um, student government because I that's that's one of the leadership positions that I haven't been gotten the chance to be involved in on campus. Um, but as far as like the positions that I've had, I just feel like being a leader on any college campus, but especially Champlain, um, because students and faculty, students, faculty and staff have the communication between them is 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 respected highly. And and I think it's it's really easy. Um, like I don't feel intimidated when approaching faculty or staff at Champlain. And I think being a student leader is a big part of that because I interact with administration on a daily basis as you know, part of the interview process to become an RA or to become a student ambassador to become orientation leader. You know, you're talking to the people who are in charge of these programs. But then once you are into that position, you don't stop seeing them because they're hands on involved in everything. So just the presence of being around people who are pretty high up in the ladder gives you a lot of confidence to just speak up about things that 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 concern you or things that you're passionate about and once you know who's in what chair then you know who to go to to get stuff done so it's more of like it more of opens your eyes and lets you know who's in what position so you know who to talk to you know where to go yourself if there's a change you want to enact um, and student government has definitely you know made a, a lot of awesome changes over the years that I've been here that um, I'm sure that Kiana would love to talk about if, if she wanted to. Yeah, I'm going to throw it over to you, Kiana, um, especially since you are so involved in Student Government Association. Could you just talk a little bit about your position and, and how that's allowed you um, to make change here on campus? So with my position specifically, I have been able to create a workshop to talk to faculty and staff about name pronunciation and pronoun usage in the classroom. Because a lot of students were not feeling that the classroom was a safe community for them because either professors weren't getting their pronouns right or they weren't getting their names right. So um, the workshop that was put together by me and another student who was in the SGA, um, her name was Becca May, we put a list of examples that students have given to us, um, first-hand accounts of different students and how some professors may not have gotten their pronouns or names right. And then we kind of walked through action steps and feasible things that professors can do in order to change that in their classrooms. Because it's not always intentional it, that a professor may not get a student's pronoun right, but it's still a part of a person's identity that people feel very passionately about. So it's something that needs to be gotten right. So we went, so we made up a list of action steps and things that professors can do before classes start in order to get a student's pronouns um, ahead of time, or if they feel like they may not be able to pronounce a student's name to ask them ahead of time so that when class time starts, they'll be able to say it correctly. And after the workshop, all of our notes were put into a toolkit that faculty are able to access at any time. So if they would like clarification on something, they can access it. If they're new to the school, they have it in front of them because they weren't able to attend the workshop before. Um, as for some of the other positions, so for incoming students, first years will be able to run for first year representatives um, in the fall. And that position allows for first years to be a House of Representative member and they're able to put on events, talk to their fellow first years, um, and they're able to 
interact and engage with their entire class and ask them what they what kind of activities they want to see put on what do they want with the school um, and then some of the other positions include like ITS representatives CCM representatives um, each division has a representative and so does each class and then for cabinet positions there's directors of finance communication clubs and then president and vice president Awesome, thank you so much, Kiana. Um, and just to let y'all know, um, you don't necessarily have to be in a formal um, student leadership position to make a change. If you wanna make a change on your own um, and, and get your fellow students behind it, as, as well as the rest of the Champlain community, we're there with you and we fully support that. So although all of our student leader positions are awesome and we've all been involved in some sort of way or currently still involved in some sort of way in different student leadership positions, um, you can too, but you don't have to to make that change. Um, so thank you, Noah, and thank you, Chris, for those awesome questions. Um, uh, anybody have any great advice for those who are interested in becoming student leaders when they come to Champlain? Uh, we'll start with you, Kiana. Some advice I would give is to make sure that whatever student leader position that you're either applying for or you're going for it's what you really feel passionate about don't do something just because you think it would look good on a resume or just because other people told you to do it if you don't feel passionate about it you shouldn't force yourself to do it because then it's not going to be fun for you it's not going to be engaging you're not going to get out of it what you would if you had a lot of passion for it Totally. I 100% agree with you. Um, we'll go over to you, Anthony. Uh, what advice do you have for students who are interested in becoming student leaders? I, I would just say, if it's something that interests you, get your foot in the door early. Like there are, during, during orientation week, you meet a lot of really important people at the school but most students during orientation week are so sucked up in everything else about this transition that a lot of the names that they hear of important people that they meet during orientation week kind of just go in one ear and out the other because they're worried about moving into the res hall, moving into, you know, starting classes. And these are all important things, but, you know, there's a lot of amazing people that you can meet during orientation weekend who can hook you up with a lot of great positions on campus. It's, it's, your first year, especially about knowing people and showing those people that you're somebody who can who can move the, their department in the position that in the direction that they want to move it. Um, so just showing that showing that interest right off the bat, even if maybe you know maybe you want a semester to just get get adjusted before you move into leadership. As long as people know your name the campus is small enough to where they're going to see you around, you're going to bump into each other anyway. So you might as well know who you're bumping into. Totally. Um, and last but not least, Brian, any words of advice from you? Yeah, this relates uh, kind of to what Ant said, but look for opportunities, like always be on the lookout because there are tons available to you. And a lot of like the really successful student leaders have been students who have found those opportunities and then took full advantage of them. Um, because it is really important to do that. And once again, I feel like I said this multiple times, it's gonna be my theme of the night, but like look for ways to push yourself and jump outside your comfort zone. Cause I think that's a really vital aspect to student leadership. Cause I think that's gonna be the only way that you're gonna be really, really be able to grow within a position and to just grow as a student um, and a person in general. I just think that's really important. Awesome, thank you all. Um... Those are all really great pieces of advice. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for all of your great wisdom. Um, also, thank you to everyone who, <laughs> who has been watching tonight or will be watching soon. Um, 
And thank you, Noah and Chris, for your questions. They were great. Um, we hope that this has been really helpful for y'all who want to become student leaders or just more involved on campus. Um, if you have any more questions about student leadership, feel free to email me at admissions at champlain uh, Sorry, admissions intern at champlain edu, um, and I will send out these questions or answer them myself and make sure that you get all the answers that you need. Um, also, make sure to connect with us on social media if you have these questions as well. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, Snapchat. Um, so definitely make sure to connect with us um, over at admissions. Um, also join the class of 2022 page if you are an admitted student and have not yet joined because there's a lot of fun going on that page right now. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to Nadia. Again, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much, Steph, and also to Anthony, Brian, and Kiana. That was a wonderful panel. Um, again, as Stephanie already thanked um, all of you viewers um, out there, um, I just want to um, call your attention to some upcoming live streams. You can find all of these on our admitted students page um, on the Champlain or um, also on the Champlain College um, admissions blog and on our YouTube channel. Um, the next one is coming up on Monday, March 19th. It's about getting involved and in more. There were some questions about clubs and activities, so there'll be um, that's a great one for you to join if you want to hear some more conversation about clubs at Champlain College. We also have one coming up Thursday, March 29th, about what to expect as a game major. So all you game majors out there, if you want to um, chat with some of our really great students in our game programs, that would be a wonderful one for you to attend. Monday, April 2nd, I'm admitted, now what? Um, Wednesday, April 11th, Champlain College housing. That's always a popular conversation, so don't forget to jump in on that one. Um, first generation students, um, a conversation on Thursday, April 19th. And again, all of our live streams happen at 7 p.m. Um, as Steph reminded you, and I want to remind you one last time as we jump off, that we do have our admitted student days coming up on the weekends of April 6th and 7th and also April 13th and 14th. Those are fantastic events for our admitted students. I highly recommend any of you um, that can to make, um, to make a plan to come to at least one of those events. Um, students leave those events with new friends and um, great relationships that they carry into their time at Champlain College. So I highly recommend you all to join those. And last but not least, once again, our Champlain College Class of 2022 Facebook group. Please join that page. There's lots of conversation happening on that page already, and we want you to get involved. Again, thank you so much, and all of you have a great and wonderful evening.